hello everyone welcome to another video and this is part 8 of linux for devops crash course so let's start so today i want to start the video by showing you how you can check the current host name of a linux machine and how you can uh, change it so let's go straight to the terminal and I'm logged in as ec2-user on an AWS EC2 rail line machine <clears throat> and uh, these are different commands related to hostname so let's see the first command so hostname command is going to show you the current hostname of the Linux machine it is the default hostname given by AWS <clears throat> and uh, also information is stored in one file which is slash etc slash hostname okay so you can see the same information in this file as the hostname of the Linux machine then next command is to change the hostname uh, to one of your choice so you can use hostname ctl command so hostname ctl set hyphen hostname space then new host name okay for example i want to name it as rail line all right okay since i am logged in as ec2 hyphen user i have to be using sudo with all of the uh, root commands so let's run the same command with sudo and now if i do host name I can see hostname changed and similarly if I get the contents of slash etc slash hostname file I will see the same new hostname written in this file as well okay then there's another command called hostname ctl so it's going to show you some additional information related to operating system version uh, machine id boot id and so on okay <clears throat> so these are the commands to check the host name change the host name so host name is pretty important when you are working in a real-time environment you are working for an enterprise so host names are the ones that we use uh, as names for all these machines so it's pretty important to know how to change it or how to uh, check the host name next <clears throat> so uh, in this slide i want to i want to talk about uh, archiving files and directories in linux and compressing them as well to save some storage spaces so so just like you have um, archiving and compressing in a windows operating system you have uh, something called a star to archive the files and directories and you have gzip to compress the files to store some space okay so archiving and compressing files are useful when creating backups and transferring data across the network so generally we will create uh, these archives and uh, compressed files to extract them and to store them somewhere as the backup of some critical data that we want to have backups for okay so that is where we use it the most so we can use uh, tar command to archive and we can use gzip command to compress the files <clears throat> okay and in the screenshot you can see uh, to use the tar command one of the following actions is required so you use c i mean we are, we are going to see uh, an example command but just to give you uh, some information about the different flags that we are going to use with the tar command so c is used to create an archive T is to list the contents of an archive and X is to extract an archive okay and then there is uh, the the commonly used options is F for file name so you can name your archive uh, file name so you can use F and then V stands for uh, verbosity just remember whenever you see uh, V for verbosity anywhere in Linux it means that whatever commands you are going to run you are going to see a lot of additional information if you add this flag okay so to see some more details of the command execution what that command is actually doing uh, behind the scenes 
you can generally add v flag to most of the commands in Linux. So tar example, so let's go to the terminal straight away. And here I don't have anything right now. So let's try to create some files, some test files. So I'm going to create use a touch command to create these five files f1, f2, f3, f4, f5. If I do ls, you can see those four files created. And then I'm going to use tar command to create an archive. Uh, so I'm going to create a new file, which will be all files.tar. And this file is going to archive the files that I just created, f1, f2, f3, f4, f5. Okay, so the command is tar, then name, sorry, uh, cf. So if I go back to the previous slide, we can see C is used to create an archive and F is to name your uh, archive file. Okay, so I want to create an archive and I want to name my new archive file name as well. So I'm using CF. Okay, so tar space CF space name of the file since I've used F flag. So I'll do all files dot tar. Okay, and then the name of the files that I want to create archive for so f1 f2 f3 f4 f5 all right so i'm using the same command as given in the example now if i do ls i will see a new file all files or tar so this file is an archive of uh, f1 f2 f3 f4 f5 file so this is the way to create an archive uh, in linux using tar command okay then uh, now I will try to extract the uh, tar file into individual files. So I just want to see what all uh, is there in this tar file. So for that, let me create a directory. So I'll use mkdir space tar. And then I'm going to move this archive file to this location as given the example. So now I'll cd into it, cd tar, and I can see the archive files, uh, the uh, archive file in this directory. Okay, so now I will use uh, tar command to extract the files which are part of the archive. So, so first I created the archive using tar command. Now I'm going to extract the archived file name to individual files. So for that I have to use x flag. If you go back to the previous slide, we can see X is used to extract an archive. Okay, and F is again used to the file name of the archive to operate on. Okay, so I want to do tar space X F. Okay, so X is to extract and F is the file name on which you want to execute this command. So it will be all files dot tar. Okay, simple. Hit enter. Now, if I do ls, I will see those those five files. So this is the way to extract a tar file into individual files and directories. Okay, in our case, it was only files. I hope the example is clear to you. <clears throat> All right, next slide. So in the previous example, we created an archive using tar, using tar command. Now we are going to archive the components. So to create, an, to create a compressed tar archive, one of the following tar options can be specified. So Z for gzip compression. So you can create a, a compressed file uh, using a tar. I mean, you can create an archive which is compressed. So that's why we are saying you can create a compressed tar archive, which means you are archiving and compressing at the same time. So, and you can uh, name your file as well so that you, you are able to identify the file that the file is archived and compressed at the same time. So <clears throat> we can use this Z flag for gzip compression and we can name the file as filename.gz. Okay, or you can use filename.tgz, it's up to you. Then J uh, is for a bzip2 compression. So if you are using uh, other compression tool which is bzip2 so apart from gzip there are other tools as well 
so you can use bzip2 and you can use xz as well for that you have to specify capital j but in our example i'm going to use gzip because i've used it a lot and i think that's one of the most uh, widely used uh, compression tool okay so so once again i have an example which i want to show you <clears throat> so i'm on my terminal so let me go back let me get rid of these files i don't need these directories and files so i'll just do rm rm space hyphen rf star so now i won't have anything all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create two files first of 5 mbs each using f allocate command if you remember this command i've already uh, showed you in our past in one of our past videos f allocate is a command that is used to create a file with some size with with size of your choice okay so i want to create a file called f11 and i want to uh, have the size of the file is 5 mb so i can use this command to create random files like that so i'll use f allocate space hyphen small l space the size that i want to specify for the new file in this example is it is this 5 mb so i'll just type 5 m space name of the file which is f11 if i do ls i can see f11 if i do ls space hyphen l i can see the size okay uh, let's do ls space hyphen lh to see the values in human readable format so you can see the file name f11 and the size is 5 mbs okay and then uh, one more so i'm going to create two files i've created one file i'll use the same command and file name will be f12 this time so similarly if i do ls space hyphen lh i can see i have two files of 5 mbs each okay now i'm going to compress these files so i'm going to create a compressed file which is going to be an archive and the size is going to reduce okay so that's what we want to achieve using compressed star archive isn't it so let's do it so i'm going to use this command so tar space czf czf if you want to see the flags you can go back to the previous slide sorry not to the previous slide on the same slide if you see so so see uh, okay yes you have to go to your second slide in the ppt so second slide will show you the tar options so c is used to create an archive okay uh, f is used to uh, create a file name <clears throat> i mean either it can be a file that you want to create or it can be a file which is already there but you want to operate the tar command on okay so in this slide you can see c is used to create an archive and f is for file name <clears throat> and x not x sorry z so z is used to z is used to create gzip compression so i'm using three flags here tar czf c is to create the tar compression the sorry uh, tar archive <clears throat> z is used to create gzip compression and f is used to specify the file name <clears throat> Okay, so I'll use tar space czf space, I'll use the same name, arc hyphen comp, which basically means archiving and compressing at the same time, dot tar tar dot gz. Okay, so it's, it's a tar archive which is compressed. And then I'm going to specify which files I want to uh, compress uh in this in this new file so i'll specify the files f11 f12 now if i do ls or maybe i'll do ls space space hyphen lh to see the size of the compressed tar archive so if you see here <clears throat> we had two files of 5 mbs each f11 f12 and i created a compressed tar archive and the file size uh, which should have been a 10 MBs because I, I mean created this uh, archive 
of the two files of 5 MBs each. So it should have been 10 MBs, but the size of the file is just 11 uh, K, okay? So 11 kilobytes, which means I was able to compress these two files uh, as well, okay? So this is the way to create compression using gzip, okay? But once again, you have other options as well. If you want to use bzip too, you have to just change the flag from small z to small j. And if you are using xz, tool then you can uh, use the uh, this capital J instead of small z okay so this is the way to create a compressed star archive in Linux I hope the example is clear to you and even if uh, you have any doubts due to any anything you can always put in the comment section and I'm going to answer all your uh, queries next is <clears throat> extract a compressed tar archive so i've just created the extract now i want to extract it okay so once again i'm going to create a directory as given in the example so i'll do mkdir extract okay and then i'm going to cd into it i'm going to move the archive the compressed uh, tar archive to this directory so I'm going to use mv space to go one step back because I know that the compressed tar archive file is in uh, the uh, previous location which means uh, in, in the root directory sorry in the home directory of ec2 hyphen user so what I'll do is mv space dot dot which means I want to go one step back after that I know the file is there so I can use the name of the file okay so let me explain this command again so mv space dot dot means I'm trying to move a file which is located in go one step back so the meaning of dot dot is I want to go one step back and there the file is there okay so there in that directory move this file to which location to the present working directory which is represented by a dot okay so in this way I can move this file from that location to my present working directory if I do ls now I can see that archived uh, that uh, uh, compressed tar archive in this location so I was able to move the file directly from that location to my present working directory using this command okay next i'm going to extract now i'm going to extract the com the components of this file so i'll use tar command again and this time instead of c which is used to create the archive i'm going to use x which is used to extract the archive so x then the compression that i've used in this in this file is a gzip so i'll use small z and then f to specify the name of the file which is arc hyphen com dot tar dot gz all right just run the command and now if i do ls i will see the extracted files okay and if i do ls space uh, hyphen lh i can see the file is in original condition okay so i i was able to extract this compressed tar archive and i see my two original files with the same size so in, in this way i was able to extract a compressed tar archive all right next slide copying files between systems securely so we have seen how ssh works how ssh password authentication works or ssh keys work to authenticate to a remote machine and uh, open a, a shell a session on the remote machine so we have used ssh so similarly we have another command called scp so ssh can be used to copy files from one machine to the other using scp command scp stands for secure copy okay so you are trying to uh, copy files from one location to the other in a secured way so this scp uses ssh protocol just remember this it was asked in the interview once which protocol does scp uses it uses ssh okay so i've i've given some commands that you can use to securely copy files okay the first thing is 
so you should have two servers so I, I have two servers already in AWS I'm logged into uh, this server and I'm uh, logged into one more server okay so what you have to do is let me go back to my home directory first cd so I'm in my home directory now I have to create a SSH key pair using SSH hyphen keygen command okay so this command I have I've shown in my uh, in one of my past videos as well so SSH hyphen keygen is used to create a SSH key pair okay which means you will create a public key and a private key using this command okay so SSH hyphen keygen enter So since I already have this key created, so I get I got I get the option to overwrite yes or no. I'm going to type no, but in your case, if you're getting it for the first time, uh, you uh, you won't get this option. Or if if you want to overwrite, you can just type yes. Okay, but in my case, I'm going to type no. So I've created the key pair already. Now what I have to do? I have to cat the contents of my uh, public key okay so to do that cat space the public key after running ssh keygen command will always be in your home directory so i can since i'm already in the home directory i can straight away go to dot ssh id underscore rsa dot pub okay but but if you want you can specify home directory also it's up to you so this command will work and if you specify cat space home directory so which is uh, sometimes represented by a tilde on your keyboard tilde then slash then dot ssh and id underscore rsa dot pub so this command will also work okay it's up to you which one do you want to use the result will be the same so I want to cat the contents of my uh, public ssh key okay and then what I'm going to do is so I have to copy this first I have to copy this entire public key of my server one then go to server two okay and uh, here you can see I'm logged in as ec2 hyphen user on the other server as well I'm going to create a file or I'm going to open a file called authorized underscore keys okay so if you remember from one of the past videos again I'm referring to that video I'm going to put that uh, uh, put the link of that video which covers SSH concepts in the description of this video so anyone who has come to my channel for the first time can um, go to that video to understand the concepts of SSH keygen and SSH in general okay if if there are any any confusions around this part all right so I'm going to uh, open this file authorize underscore keys okay on server 2 and I'm going to uh, uh, copy the public key that I copied from uh, uh, server one to this location. So you can see I've, I've already copied that. Okay, so I don't need to copy it again. But in your case, if you're doing it for the first time, you have to copy the uh, the contents of the SSH uh, public key from server one to server two in this file. Okay, so I'm going to quit without saving since I've already copied that okay and then on server one I have to create a file okay so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a file on server one and then I'm I will I will try to copy it to the other server server two using SCP secure copy command okay and I'm since I'm using SSH keys to authenticate to the other server I don't need to use username and password okay it's up to you you can use uh, you can use username and password as well but uh, the best way to do it is using ssh keys okay so i'm using ssh keys here so i'm going to create this file echo just for test and i'm going to print this text to a file called test dot txt okay and here if you see uh, in, in the home directory of ec2 hyphen user i don't have this file yet okay so there are no files right now but when i use secure copy to copy the file 
from server 1 to server 2 you will see this file here okay so after that you can use this scp command so i'll use scp space the file that you want to copy so it's test.txt test.txt okay and then you have to specify the path i mean you have to specify the username uh, then the ip address or the host name of server 2 and then the location on server 2 where you want to copy this test.txt file okay so this is the format of scp command so i'm going to use ec2 hyphen user at the rate ip address which is 172.31.25.178 in your case it will be different so use that ip address 172.31.25.178 and on this location i want to copy the file to home directory of ec2 hyphen user okay hit enter and you will see the message uh, test.txt 100% the file was copied at 13.5 kb per second now if i go back to server 2 and do ls i will see the same file test.txt here and if i try to cat the contents the contents will be the same just for test so in this way i was able to securely copy a file from server 1 to server 2 using scp command and using sh keys as the authentication mechanism okay so this is how you can use scp then next the transfer files remotely will with sftp so one more uh, ssh based tool is sftp which means a secure file transfer protocol so once again you are using the secured feature and sftp also uses ssh in the back end okay so let's try this now so uh, let's just read through what sftp means so if an interactive tool is preferred when uploading or downloading files to a ssh server the sftp command can be used sftp accepts ls cd mkdir rmdir pwd put exit and get commands okay so uh, the main difference between sftp and scp is in scp you don't interact with the server okay you just run the command and the file gets copied but in case of sftp you get the option to interact with the server which means you are uh, able to run some commands on the server okay so how to do it uh, we have to use this command sftp command okay so i'm on on server one i'll do sftp space so where i want to sftp i want to sftp to server two so i'll use ec2 hyphen user at the rate ip address which is 172.31.25.178 so you see connected to 172 to 31.25.178 and once again since i have already copied my public keys to the other server i am able to authenticate using ssh keys okay i don't have to specify the password so this is the reason I want to use as such, I don't want to specify the password again and again. And uh, this is uh, a secured way as well okay, to authenticate to other server. <clears throat> All right, so I'm connected to SFTP and, and uh, when you're able to uh, connect using SFTP, you will see this prompt as SFTP and then this greater than symbol. So now you are able to interact with this server. Okay, and you can use all these commands Okay, so if I do ls here, I'll see test.txt. It means from server 1, I'm able to sftp, I'm able to sftp to server 2. Okay, and here, since I'm using ec2 hyphen user, I am inside the home directory of the ec2 hyphen user. If you do pwd, you can see remote working directory slash home slash ec2 hyphen user, uh, ec2 hyphen user. Okay. If I delete this file from here, rm hyphen space space hyphen rf test.txt from server two. If I go back to server one, do ls, I won't see that file. Okay, that file is deleted. So you are inside the directory, you are inside the home directory of server two right now. Okay, using sftp. Next, <clears throat> uh, so ls I just showed you, pwd I showed you, mkdir dir. So you can create a directory as well. So I'll do mkdir space dr 
enter i'll do ls i can see the new directory being created and similarly if you go to server to do ls you will see the same directory here dr okay then next command is rmdirdr so once again you can delete the directory rmdir means remove directory dr do ls the directory is deleted same you can verify on server 2 if i do ls the directory is gone okay so just to verify that we are on that server and we are able to perform various operations using sftp all right now another example is i want to uh, I want to use the uh, get and put commands. Okay, so for that, let's use this example in the screenshot. So I'm logged into the server. What I'll do is I'll do get space etc rsyslog dot conf. Enter. If I do ls here, I can see, okay, okay. So what I what I did using this this get command is, I downloaded the file on this server on server one. Okay. So what I did is I downloaded the file from server 2 to server when you're using the get command okay so if i exit from here if i do ls i will see this rsyslog.com file so this is the way to download the file to the first server from a remote server so i ran this uh, sftp command and i used the get command to get the file from server 2 to server 1 okay so so so, so uh, sometimes there can be some confusion around this get command is it trying to download from server 2 to server 1 or server 1 to server 2 okay so just remember this that when you are using sftp on server 1 and when you run this this get command it is the way to download the file from that remote server to your uh, local server which you use to sftp to the new server okay so you can see here I'm, uh, I'm logged out of the SFTP session and when I did ls, I, I can see the file which was fetched using the get command from server 2, okay, like in this example. Okay, similarly, you can use this put command as well. You can try the put command as well. It works in the similar way, okay. So this is all about SFTP. So I've covered uh, tar. Uh, jzip, scp, sftp, okay, so, okay, the example of, uh, okay, put command also I have uh, pasted here, so let's try this example as well. So now what I have to do is, I have to again sftp to the server, to, to server 2, done, and then I have to do put slash etc slash yum dot conf enter uploading so i uploaded the file to the uh, server 2 so this is the just just uh, opposite of the get command okay so now if i do ls here i can see yum dot conf file so this put command is used to upload the file to the remote server okay so now if i go to server 2 and uh, if i do ls here I can see yum.com file. So this yum.com file was copied from server one to server two using the put command here. Okay. So get command and put command both I've shown you real examples. Next is synchronizing files between system securely. Now one more important tool is the rsync tool. Okay. So the rsync tool is another way to securely copy files from one system to another. It differs from SCP in that if two files or directories are similar between two systems, rsync only need to copy the differences between the systems while SCP would copy everything. The meaning of this is, suppose you are using the rsync command, 
okay uh, to <coughs> a copy file from one location to the other so this rsync command is going to see on the other server where you want to copy the files to if there are existing files already if the files are already there it, it's not going to uh, copy those files again it's only going to copy the files which are not there so it's going to sync okay so, it, so it, it's going to sync the contents of both the directories on the servers and it, it is just going to copy the files which are not there okay so <clears throat> Uh, let's see the commands that we can use with our with our sync command okay so this is the difference between our sync and scp in case of scp it's going to copy everything okay uh, but in case of our sync only the the files which are not there will be copied to other location to to see the the, the dry run of our sync you can use our sync space hyphen n which means you want to see what all files will be copied Okay, so if you want to uh, just want to check what all files will be copied, you can use the dry run of changes, which is uh, which you can do by specifying uh, hyphen small n. Okay, then uh, the other command is rsync space hyphen av. So v once again stands for uh, verbosity, which means when when you run this command, you will see a lot of additional information that uh, this command is is doing behind the scenes. So you have to use this V flag and A is to archive and enables all the following. So, our, uh, so, so this is actually one of the most common commands that we use with, with our sync, our sync space hyphen AV. So V stands for verbosity and A stands for archive and it enables all of the following. The following is uh, hyphen R which is to synchronize recursively the whole directory tree. So if you want to copy, uh, no. Uh, recursively from I mean, folder to subfolder so in that case you can use uh, hyphen small r then hyphen l is to uh, synchronize uh, symbolic links uh, I mean we haven't uh, studied symbolic links but uh, since this option has just come up here so I just want to uh, I mean mention it here so um, I mean hyphen l stands for synchronize symbolic links I mean you can leave this for now okay it's not that important to learn but um, I'll see if I can make a video on on links. Uh, okay, so I'll I'll see if, if I get enough time. I'm going to create a, a one video on this. Then hyphen p is to preserve permissions. So it's going to preserve the same permissions as well. Okay. Then hyphen t is to preserve the timestamps on the files. Hyphen g is to preserve a group ownership. I think all these options are clear apart from symbolic links. These options are clear to you because I have covered all these in my previous videos. Then uh, hyphen G is to preserve group ownership. Hyphen O is to preserve the owner of the files. Hyphen uh, hyphen uh, capital D to, is to synchronize device files. So you can see if you just use this A option, A flag with our sync command, it's going to do a lot for you. Okay, so that's why it is the most common command to use with our sync command. So let's see one example of our sync. So I, I've given two examples here. Okay. So this this color coding is to uh, differentiate between the two two different examples. So I'm logged in on server one. So let's create a directory, and I'm going to create a directory using the root privileges. So I'm using sudo permissions. So I'll do sudo space mkdir space slash rsync. So I'm going to create this directory rsync under root directory, which is represented by slash forward slash okay so let me do one thing let me delete this let me recreate so now i'll run the command again okay so our sync directory is created under root directory then what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the cp command to copy uh, the contents of where log directory okay so uh, let's go to where log directory first and see what all components are there so where log if i do ls space hyphen l i can see a lot of files in there because it is the log directory slash where slash log remember from our past videos is the main directory where uh, most of the log files are stored okay so slash where slash log 
So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to copy some files to another another folder and then I'm going to run this rsync command to sync the components or the uh, the contents of the two directories and copy the files which are not there in the other location. Okay. So for that I'm, I'm trying to copy some files first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use cp space hyphen r to copy the directories as well and I'm going to copy only the files and directories which starts with m okay so if I want to copy all the files and directories which starts with m I can use m star star is, is the wild card here which means anything after m will be included in this command space r sync Parsing. So I'm trying to create all the I'm, I'm trying to uh, uh, copy all the files and directories which which starts with m to slash r sync directory. Okay, since I'm, using, I'm logged in as EC2 hyphen user, I have to be sudo. I have to use sudo. Then now if I do ls space hyphen l on r sync, I can see some of the files copied but not all the files okay not all the files so now we will use rsync to see if it is able to uh, sync the files from slash where slash log to slash rsync so for that i will use this command sudo rsync command space hyphen av if you remember av which is the most common option you can go back to the previous slide to see what all is in, is included in uh, hyphen av okay then space slash where slash log space rsync so what it's going to do is it's going to see what all files are already copied in slash rsync from slash where slash log directory and it's going to uh, copy only the files which are missing in rsync from slash where slash log enter and you can see the details as well since I used v option for uh, verbosity I can see what all files were copied okay so only the files which were missing if you I mean compare the list you will see only the files which were missing in slash rsync were copied Okay, so it synced all the files. Okay, it synced all the files. And now if I do ls space hyphen l on slash rsync, I can see all the files now. Okay, so rsync was able to sync the components or the contents of the two directories. Okay. Then uh, one more example is where we have to use rsync on a remote server. So in the first example, I used rsync command to uh, copy the contents of one directory to the other on the uh, local server, on just one server. But you, you can use rsync command to uh, uh, copy files from uh, one server to the other as well. So, so for that, this is the example. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my home directory and I'm going to create a directory called data mkdir data and then I'm going to create some files inside this directory so I'm going to use a touch command touch data and then I'm going to specify f1 and then the curly braces and I'm going to type 1 2 dot dot one five then close the curly braces the meaning of this is it's going to create uh, multiple files but i don't have to specify the file names separately okay so i'm going to use this uh, these curly braces like a shortcut to create multiple files so the files will be uh, that will be created will have names as f112 f113 f114 and f115 okay so this is the way to create multiple files without having to specify the commands uh, I mean without, without having to specify multiple commands to do so alright now if I do ls space hyphen l data I can see 
those five uh, those uh, four files which I talked about. So F one one two, F one one three, F one one four, F one one five. Then I'm going to do R sync. Okay, just one one more thing. Uh, I'm on another server. I'm logged in on another server as well. And if I do ls, I can see only yum dot file. Let me get rid of this file. I don't need it anymore. So now, if I if you see, I'm on server two, and if I do pwd, I'm in the home directory of ec2 hyphen user, and I don't have any files right now. All right, no files are there. So I'm going to use r sync command to sync the files from one a directory on server one to another directory on server two okay which is the home directory of ec2 hyphen user okay so i'm going to copy all the files from a data directory on server one to ec2 hyphen user uh, 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 directory on server two so i'm going to do rsync space hyphen av hyphen av space data slash space a server name which is 172.31.25.178 in your case it will be different so choose that ip address here the server 2 ip address and then inside i mean on this server under home directory of ec2 hyphen user all right And remove the trailing slash from this okay and uh, run the command so the command ran successfully so now if i go to server 2 and do ls i can see those four files which are created on server 1 i was able to successfully sync to this directory on server 2 using the rsync command so this is how rsync command works locally on one server and remotely on another server Alright, so uh, that's all about this video. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you did, you can um, hit that like button. You can share this video with others and you can subscribe to my channel. Alright guys, I'm going to end the video now and I'm going to see you in the next one. Thank you and bye.